Hi everyone, it's Renisha. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to take care of your sword and how to clean your sword. Here I have uh, Zoro's Wadawich emoji and that's what I'm going to be using to show you guys. Uh, yeah, that's, that's okay for an intro, right? Okay. <laughs> Right here I have our sword care kit. You can buy it on our website at fireandsteel.ca. Uh, this is going to include everything that you're going to need to uh, take care of your sword. So uh, this is how it's going to look right when uh, you open it and I will go through everything. The first thing that comes in the kit is choji oil. So it's going to come in a bottle like this. Choji oil is going to prevent your sword from rusting and it's very important that you use uh, choji oil specifically. Uh, any other oil will probably not be very good for your sword so make sure it's choji oil the next thing it comes with is this cloth right over here so you're just gonna be using this to wipe down your sword after you use it and to apply the oil as well this is an uchiko so this is basically a powder ball it's filled with a non-abrasive powder that you're gonna use to uh, clean your sword this is uh, really cute I don't know why it's so cute <laughs> the next thing it comes with is this brass awl and hammer uh, you're gonna be using this to uh, disassemble your sword and reassemble your sword if you need to I won't be showing that in this video I just want to do uh, basic uh, cleaning but uh, if you do need it we have it it also uh, comes apart so you can separate it if you need to just use this part and you don't want the weight of the hammer. The last thing it comes with are these extra makugi pegs. Uh, so you probably won't really need to use these uh, that frequently, uh, it's just in case you need to replace the makugi pegs on your sword, uh, but you have them just in case you do need them. So another thing that we do have that's not required for uh, sword care, and I will not be showing that in this video, but I do want to mention it, is uh, we have a sharpening stone uh, right over here. Uh, just comes like that. Uh, and it's an option in case uh, you want to sharpen your sword. If you're wondering how often you should be uh, taking care of your sword or cleaning uh, your sword, I would say that if you are getting one of our high carbon steel swords and you're using it to cut fruit or you're using it to cut bamboo or anything like that, uh, make sure you clean it after every single use because every single material uh, will affect the blade and you want to make sure to get anything off. If you're cutting watermelons, you want to get that watermelon juice off, right? If you are just uh, storing your blade, then uh, again, I would say do this frequently just because uh, you never know what could happen. You always want to make sure uh, you're taking care of your sword, even if you don't take it out of the sheath. When you are cleaning your sword, first and uh, most important thing is be careful. Uh, just remember that, again, this is not a toy, so you got to be really careful when handling this. And because you will be uh, getting really close and personal with the blade, be very careful about where you're putting your hands. So that's the number one rule. This is very scary. Uh, but here is the blade. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to wipe down your blade. So you're going to grab this cloth right over here. Make sure that the spine is facing uh, downward and make sure you're touching the side of the spine. Don't go cleaning it from the top because you will cut your finger. So you're just going to grab your cloth and you're just going to very carefully slide up and just get whatever is on the blade to come off the blade. Yeah, and just do that a couple times. Make sure you get everything kind of off. So now you can see that the blade is clean. There's not really any oil left, but if there is any oil residue, uh, the next step is important for that. So the next thing we're gonna be doing is getting any excess oil or any excess anything that's left on that. And the way to do that is by using the Uchiko ball. So this, again, this powder is gonna uh, just take away any excess oil. And this part's really fun. You're just gonna basically hit it against the blade. Very gently, you don't need to do it very hard. It's a lot of fun. And you're gonna do that to both sides. And if you need uh, assistance, make sure that you ask for assistance uh, at any point. You don't have to do, do this alone, but it is something that's very relaxing. So this is like a nice way to just chillax. So the next thing we're gonna be doing is uh, just basically taking this powder off, because obviously you don't wanna leave the powder on the sword, it's just to get the excess oil off. So you're gonna grab your cloth again, and you're just gonna, again, make sure that you're touching the spine part and not the blade, and you're just gonna wipe it all off. And you can run through it a couple times and then you can see it's all kind of right over there. And there you go, now your sword is completely clean of any excess oils, any excess anything really. This is what you want. The final thing that we're going to be doing, uh, now that the sword is all clean and there's nothing left on it, is we're going to be reapplying the choji oil. Because obviously you don't want to resheath your sword like this. Uh, 
the, the choji oil is going to prevent rusting and that's really what we want. We want to make sure that your sword's not rusting and it's well taken care of. Uh, so you're going to grab the choji oil right over here. You're going to open it up and it's going to come in like that. Uh, you don't need a lot of oil. A little goes a long way. So you're going to take your cloth and you're going to apply a little bit of oil to the cloth, just like that. And then what you're basically gonna do is you're gonna grab your sword and you're gonna reapply that. And again, a little goes a long way. You can kind of already see that. And make sure you kind of get it all around. You saw how little I applied and how much is on the sword. Again, you don't really need a lot, but look at that. Actually looks so much nicer <laughs> now that the oil's back on. So yeah, that's uh, basically it. Now your sword is perfectly clean, it's well taken care of, and it's not gonna rust. So we can just go back and carefully resheath the sword. And there you go. You're done. This is a very basic cleaning. If you are using your sword to hit targets, again, you should be doing this uh, after each use. If you wanted to do a more in-depth cleaning uh, of your sword, you could uh, take your brass awl and kind of take out the mukugi pegs here. And once you take those out, you can hit the blade out and you can kind of clean uh, where the blade is built into the handle. Uh, if you wanted to do that, that's not something that I'm going to show you guys in this video. But again, it, it is an option if you really want to make sure that your blade is very well taken care of. I did show you guys how to clean uh, a high carbon steel sword because uh, our high carbon steel swords are what you're going to actually be using to cut watermelons or cut uh, bamboo or anything like that. But uh, I recommend doing this if you have a regular carbon steel sword as well. So here is our carbon steel Wadoichi Monji. If you want to know the difference between high carbon and carbon steel, uh, we have another video that we recently made and you can see me explaining the differences between those. We'll link it in the description. Even if you are just keeping your sword in its sheath on display just like this, again, I recommend uh, cleaning your sword just because humidity, things like that can always affect uh, the blade and uh, the sheath. I know a lot of you guys get these swords so you can pretend to be anime characters, and if you want to pretend to be an anime character, make sure you clean your swords like them because that's what they don't show you in the animes. That's the, be that's the behind the scenes. Be safe and uh, have fun. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed what you just watched, please check out the links in the description down below. And like always, please consider subscribing and comment. Let us know what you think. We also have a lot of other videos. Please check them out. I know that you guys have mentioned a lot of times that you guys wanted to see some of these things demonstrated. So we have a lot of videos demonstrating how these actually do function. And we have a lot of videos of the behind the scenes at Fire and Steel. So thank you so much. See you guys next time.